Good to see you again. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure to see you here or on television. Or anywhere, just living. Uh, congratulations on the, the Daily Show. You have really made that show your own. Thank you so you much. Really, you Thank you so much. You incredible work over there. That's not easy. That's Thank not you very easy. Much. And congratulations on this tie. It's got sparkles. You like it? Do you I like, like it? these sparkles? Yeah, I try, to go, I try to go with something different. Just yeah. To, yeah. I've never seen a tie that has these things no, on it. No, it's got flavor like, crystals. Yeah, I like that. That's where that, the that, retin is. That sounds that's, like a drug. Yeah. That's what that sounds like? You want them flavor crystals, man? Mm. I got them flavor crystals. That's what it I've sounds like. I've never had yeah. a drug that good. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Stuff. Well, so how are you? <laughs> how, after six years, six years living in the United States, right? Oh, wow, yeah. Six years living in the United States. Two, three years? Two years? How many? Two years hosting The Daily three Show? Three years now. Going to be three years. years of The Daily Show. Okay, so how do you... Yeah. Uh, uh, do you understand America better now? Because I've lived here for 54 years, and I feel like I'm understanding it a little less every what, day. Well, that's... That, you know what I realize is I realize not understanding America right now is understanding America right now. That's basically how it works. Oh, c right? confusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, that you, is the soup you basically, du jour. You basically go, I don't understand all of it, which is the right way to see what's happening oh, right wow. now. You know, right. conversations people are having, the arguments people are having. I mean, like, uh, people arguing about kids being separated, that, that seems... You would think that everyone would be like, oh, yeah, no, kids, the kids. I mean, we don't separate. But this was a contentious issue. Kids should be together, and people like, controversial. Only about 70% of people statements. thought it was a bad idea. Right. Yeah. Right. There was 30% It was like, lock them up better. Smaller. Kids are small. They can get right through the chain. Lock. Right. That's basically exactly. what they went with. Yeah. Yeah, so, look, I, I, don't, I don't think I understand it more, but um, I don't know. When, like I say, when you come from an African nation, if you come from, you know, a, a developing nation, leaders like Trump are too familiar. So you go like, yeah, it's, it's, it's that with the veneer of the White House. That's what, do you, what, what, do you, what do you mean that they're, they're, they're too familiar? How yeah, is Trump like, you know, to... you know, the policies, the extreme rhetoric, like not having a firm grasp of English, these are all things... <laughs> That we're familiar with, right. so you right. know. But the trappings of office kind of kind of fool us a little bit. Um, what what, what are, you, are your thought? Like, um, apartheid was one of the most repressive repressive regimes right. uh, of the 20th century. What what's your thought on kids in cages? Like, did was that the sort of thing? Was that done? Well, no, I, people I don't... separated from their. Kids, kids were separated, but I, I, you know, the kids in cages thing is, is a completely new idea for, for myself as well as a human being. Um, it's funny because, no, my, my mom actually said to me, like, with, the, with these kids in cages and the stories, and my mom was just like, she's like, you see, that's, that's what would have happened to you. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You and there was, my parents always remind me, right, my mom and my grandmother specifically, that uh, because in the country, people of different races weren't allowed to be mixing, mm -hmm. right? And I'm technically mixed. You know, my mother's a black woman, my father's white. So if we were caught together, I would have been taken away from my parents. But I didn't know this growing up. So my mom always, like, like, when this story came out, she's like, you see, that could have been you. That could have been you. And I'm like, yeah, but why, why are you telling me this now? It's like she's threatening me post. <laughs> I'm like, I already said thank you for raising me. She's like, I'm just saying, though, that could have been you. What would have, <laughs> what would have been the logic of taking you away from your parents? Because even repressive regimes often say this is the reason well, we're doing Well, the, lo the logic is, you, if you've built a country around the notion that people of colors cannot mix when they make a mixed thing yes. that disproves your point. So you need to remove the thing that has disproved your point so that you can carry on living in your fictitious world. But if you remove... But it seems like they would remove you from your parents is not enough. They would have to remove you from public view. Oh, no, no. They just take you and give you to somebody who looks like you. Oh, so you're not... So you're yeah, not yeah, the yeah. product of a mixed marriage. Exactly. So then they wow. go, like, you came from you. That's how it works. It works. If you're crazy, it works. Yes. It really does. No, what do you There's make... logics of the madness, Stephen. What, what do you do... What do you do to keep your soul from getting a thick callus on it? Wow. Because every day, you know, one of the things <laughs> is... What, one, of, one of the things about one of the great, you know, one of the sort of the responsibilities and... But really the privilege of, of a job uh, like this or like right, what right, you right. do is that yeah. every night, you... Everyone has a reaction to the news or, or what's happening, what the national conversation is, and you have the opportunity to talk about it, get your feelings right. out about it. Uh -huh. But you also have feelings about it. And, and certainly, like, this week, it was difficult for a lot of people... Yes. ...to properly express their feelings because the first feeling is grief. Right. Often for the people who are defending it, because you don't want to actually believe that the people that you know would be in favor of something you find right, so hideous. Right, right, right. I think what, what I try and do is I spend most of my day uh, screaming, and then over time I get tired, and then when I'm tired I start thinking of the jokes. Um, oh, okay. But, but you're really, you start the day and you go like, I can't believe this, and I'm angry, and this is crazy, and the children... And then I get to work, and there's more people that are angry, and then we're angry together, and the writer's room, we're like, ah! And we just all do that together, ah! Uh -huh. 
and then we stop. I and have, then we're like, I just... and then we're like, how do we, how do we make the audience not have the feeling that we just had? Right, you take that and you turn that into right, a joke because, somehow. Because really, that's what I've always loved about comedy is it is a way for us to, to, to just, you know, to numb the pain, to process what we're going through without feeling every single, uh, you know, inkling of it. I have another way to numb the pain. I have this drinking game I play. Okay, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's when I watch the news. I have a drinking game. I turn on the news. Right. And I drink. I like that. I always win. <laughs> I've never lost. <laughs> Undefeated. What do you, what do you, as somebody who did not grow up here, but certainly pays attention to the politics of America, what do you make of our two-party system? I can I be honest with you. I think that is one of the most destructive forces in America right now. I like. I, I honestly. Yeah, I'm. I'm shocked. Like, so, so we did a piece on the show. You know, uh, Roy Wood Jr. You know, went sure. out. Uh, he went out to to Montana to cover like a, a, a mayor in Montana who's a refugee and lived in America, and he won over people who voted for Trump. And he, we, everyone was like, how did he do it? And we realized that in Montana, the, like, the, the mayoral race isn't run along party lines. So people just campaign on, on ideas. And once you remove the blue and the red, you'll be surprised at who people actually choose. You know, if you go back to the election, that's what people said. They said, look, I don't like Donald, but that's my only choice. What choice do I have? And it's weird to me that America is a country where you have, like, 16 serials but two political parties. <laughs> you should have more choices mm -hmm. because it, I, I don't think it's as simple as blue and red. No, I don't, it, I don't it think it's one or the other. Teams. Yeah, it's, it's, teams. it's completely teams. And people vote against their self-interest often. That's exactly what it is. Um, you were um, also involved on a low level... Um, in, in African politics recently because you were in Black Panther. Well, I was involved in a, in a high level, I think. Uh, really? I, uh, yeah. Now, people didn't know this at first. There was right. an uncredited right. uh, appearance in right. Black Panther. So what I did, I don't like to brag about this, but what I did was I was in Black Panther, um, the smash hit. Yeah, the, the number one movie yeah, globally. Yeah, and... Um, I, you wouldn't want to... And you know what happened was, what happened was, like, Ryan Coogler approached me and he said, hey, would you like to be the star of this movie? And I said, no, 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 I've got The Daily Show. And he said, okay, I'll get Chadwick Boseman. Do you want to do the whole thing that Michael B. Jordan does? And I was like, yeah, my six-pack, his six, too many six-packs. He goes, mm -hmm. and then I was like, you know what? I will be the voice of the computer in the background. I'll be the computer that runs every, every spaceship you see is me. People don't notice, like... Yeah, this is I, actually true. People, yeah. It was a while before the movie was out before people went, oh, wait, that's Trevor yeah, Noah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Is, I didn't know... I found this out today. <laughs> and I've seen the movie twice. And, uh, uh, play this. We'll see the clip and you'll hear his voice. The lab is under attack. What? Where? Deactivating hologram. Ross! You have to get out of there now! How long have I got? Last integrity is at 50%. Put me back in. Thank you. Thank you. Now, now you see, a lot of people think that I just did the lines there, but I'm everything. Oh, you're, you're actually in one of those motion I'm, capture suits? I'm, I'm the ship as well. They got me in to play the ship. <laughs> well, <laughs> you also have a book now. It's coming out uh, end of July. Well, I, I don't think this is my book. I think this is us expressing our gratitude for the president's amazing tweets, Stephen. It's it's <laughs> it's called. Don't give us the credit. It's called the Donald J. Trump Presidential Twitter Library. Right. <laughs> right. And tell tell the people what it's based on. So. So, you know, I, I have always believed that one of the greatest gifts Donald Trump has given to us has been his, his series of tweets. It has given us insight into the man. It has enabled us to uh, fully understand what we are dealing with every single day. And, and, and what we've provided in this book is context. You know, because unfortunately, characters are limited, and sometimes people are like, what does he mean? Well, we explain what he means. Um, we explain what he means, who he is, we break down the man, because you can learn everything about Donald Trump through... This is his 23andMe, essentially. Like, forget his DNA. You go through his tweets, you know what food he likes, what TV he watches, what music he's into, what celebrities he hates. Like, you know everything about Donald Trump. And we, we spent months on this, going through every single tweet, categorizing it, mm -hmm. giving you insight into the present of the United States. And you know what I admire about this is that you didn't write it. He did. And yet you'll make the money off the book. Well, that, my friend, that is the art of the deal. <laughs> well, Trevor... I feel like he would be proud. Thank you so I'm much. Sure he would be. The Donald J. Trump presidential Twitter library book is out July 31st. Trevor Noah, everybody. We'll be right back with Nickelodeon's newest
star, Liza Koshy.